business end of Until Mal Meninga and the Canberra Raiders started winning rugby league premierships, it was fair to say that as far as our national capital was concerned, politics was the only game in town. But now the former sheep station on the banks of the Malongolo River is abuzz with a new sporting sensation. His name is Clan O'Sullivan, and as Michael Maher reports, the two-year-old thoroughbred is a Gallipol favourite to win next month's Golden Slipper. Frank Cleary's grand plan to capture the Golden Slipper stakes and first prize of one and a quarter million dollars is now less than two weeks from fruition. Even at six o'clock on a miserable morning this week, the clan's fans, most from hometown Canberra, were there for the two-year-old's first Sydney gallop. Cleary believes this is the horse, even if some city slickers aren't convinced yet. That's only Shane Dye and Tommy Smith, you know, like if, if he had the horse train him and Shane Dye was riding him, he'd be a champion, so we'll see after the 11th. They might be right, but I think Canberra might be right too. The clan's mission is familiar to the battler, or the lesser known trainer. Vionne tackled by Terse and canonise. It's another one for Shane Dye. Terse wins the slipper. Last year, Terse's slipper triumph thrust Clary Connors into the limelight. Surely must be your proudest moment on the race course. I think so. <laughs> you even dipped him. But such are the vagaries of racing that this week, as a three-year-old, Terse was forced into retirement. Clan O'Sullivan leads in the dash for the cash at the... With Clan, Cleary is rewriting the record books. It all started when the powerhouse gelding gave the field a go-by in the Magic Millions in January. First prize, $500,000. But can a horse sold on the Gold Coast and bred in Scone in New South Wales claim Canberra as home? Well, I'm going to say he's not in that, those terms because he was born at, at the Gold Coast and he um, was back here the, the week after, so I suppose he's been here for the last, say, 16 months, uh, 15 months, so he's as Canberra as you can get him. Frank Cleary is fiercely Canberran, and to understand just how important a win in the Golden Slipper Stakes would be for him and his followers, you have to follow him through his assault on Canberra's biggest race, the Black Opal Stakes. In its 20-year history, it had never been won by a local trainer. It's two days before the race. Final workout time, breakfast with the stars. A modest affair. In the middle of the course, Horses work through a light fog. Any horse old enough would know that a former landmark, Frank Cleary's battered brown Ford, isn't around anymore. Oh, she got me around, but it was one day there she ran out of petrol and had a flat battery, so I thought I'd just leave the bloody thing there, and that's where it stayed month in, month out. And Gus Philp, I said to him recently, he said, What's wrong with it? And I said, It's just out of petrol and I've got a flat battery. So he went and got some petrol, got a battery, and he, he took it. A Black Opal win promises to solve any car worries. Because Clan won the Black Opal preview, winning the race itself will bring a bonus of two new BMWs. At the stables, Cleary is hands-on. He's larrikin turned ringmaster. I'm not allowed to swear now. But the staff here know their master well. Can I make a bet on that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, just kind off and it's just last couple on the bit. What else? No, stuff the enclosure. Just, just take them. Morale away. here is high, and while Clan is hero, this is a double act. Ask Cleary's youngest son, Ben. Ashley, when he had his first gallop, he beat a couple of good horses on the track, Strauss Opera and Nip and Zip. And then Dad said, well, we got something, and then he ran last, and his child was just shattered. So he girled at him and put blinkers on him, and he hasn't looked back since. I'm probably training better now than I've ever trained him in my whole career. What do you think you do differently, though? There are plenty of trainers out there. Uh, I think a lot harder. I, I think long and hard. I can be driving along, and the, the boys will say to me, what do you think about now? And I go, oh, I might take these horses to the coast next week, or I might take them up to the hills, or I'm have a walk through the hills or something, just something different, because they're like us. They get mentally drained, too, so... We just got to keep training their brain as well as their body. Are those bandages just to protect his leg? Yeah, he's such a clumsy big bugger. Well, he just sleep on himself or tread himself getting up, so we just can't take any chances with him now. Again. Cleary has taken plenty of knocks himself as a rugby league fullback. He represented New South Wales country, 
but his home club was the Queanbeyan Blues, which formed the basis of the Canberra Raiders. And the first love of Sue Cleary, the woman who mucks out the stables, answers the phones, handles the paperwork and who, of course, married Frank, is football. Where did you meet Sue? At a football game. <laughs> Actually, I knew him. We, we grew up in the same town. But I didn't. I went, to, I went to boarding school, so I didn't have a lot to do with Frank when I was young. <laughs> she hated him. <laughs> why, did you, why did you hate Frank, Sue? I didn't hate him. <laughs> No, I just thought he was a bit of a lair. <laughs> if he's not a lair, Cleary <laughs> is one of the lads. Didn't it rain? <laughs> Canberra Raider Ricky Stewart and <laughs> friends entrusted training of their two-year-old, How Could I, to their mate Frank and gave his wife Sue the naming rights. Frank was in New Zealand. He went to New Zealand for the yearling sales and him and I were blueing. <laughs> And he phoned me to say he bought two yearlings. And he said, one by Capstad, and he said, the other one by Don't Forget Me. And I just said, how could I? <laughs> Life is easier when Frank and Sue have winning horses, but none has been as good as Clan. First time he got up this horse, he just seemed to float. That's the exact word for him. His, his legs don't seem to leave the ground. Final gallop over, there's another commitment with the local media. The Canberra family, we're all a close-knit community up here, and I just hope he can do it for us. The weather is fine, it's developing into a beautiful day. Weather fine and the track at Canberra is rated fast. Some Canberrans may be at church, at 12, but early on race day, two Triple SFM's Tony Campbell is exchanging and turf tips with Royal Sydney Royal Radio. I've gone for gifted poets. Last the first time the city has joined Canberra to race on a Sunday. On course, there are attempts at Melbourne Cup fashion, but for most, this is a grand picnic race day. Each way on Yachty. Each way Yachty, you from Canberra? No, no, we're from Sydney. We're from Canberra. We're all from Canberra. So in Canberra it would be sacrilege not to back Clan oh, O'Sullivan. That's right. Definitely. Clan O'Sullivan. Will you be backing Clan O'Sullivan? God, I. Who's Clan O'Sullivan? But there's no mystery in the betting ring. The clan's price is so short that he's virtually unbackable. At the stables, the man with the biggest interest in clan owner and Guam businessman Ken Jones. The animal cost him just $33,000. Who picked this horse? Uh, Marilyn and, uh, and Frank, I think, got together and, uh, and picked the horse. I didn't have a thing to do with picking the horse. All they do is ask me for a check. Closer to race time, Cleary is naturally edgy. But after much handshaking and hugging with members of the clan, he's coping. Not as nervous as I thought I'd be. I thought coming up to it now that I'd be sort of real jittery and um, Probably worrying about things, but I'm not. I'm um, surprised myself, actually. Then the moment of reckoning. Gates open, and Clan O'Sullivan burst out of the gates, taken on now by Dashing Planet and Jewel of Africa showing speed. After Red Revenge running on, but with about 100 metres to go, the clan says, let's go, baby. And Clan O'Sullivan races away. That was a huge win. He's No, 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 I'm going to let the horn. No, no, you go in. No, you go in. You ain't. Go bring that horse in here. 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 Frank Cleary in a BMW, does it suit? Oh, Jesus, I don't know about that. Like feeding strawberries to pigs. A fabulous rough diamond. That horse now six to four favourite for the Golden Slipper. But what a great name, Clan O'Sullivan. You just warm to it immediately. Absolutely, and uh, really the character, Larrikin Turn Ringmaster, reminds me of a former Prime Minister of ours. Beautiful story, a beautiful character. Former English cricket captain too. <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> Later we meet AFL goal kicking champion Tony Lockett. Next, a lesson for our lawless athletes. More aggressive you are.